Super GT has decided to drag Nick and I to a track walk, kicking and screaming. They call us professionals, but track walks are not our thing. Strategy. Well, what, fast, do, what are we doing now? Right now? Yes. Um, making a video. All right. Okay, so what we're actually doing is, this is practice now. There's like 35 minutes. Alvarez, the pro, Super GT. Uh, he's gonna do the big laps now. Say hello to everybody. Ciao. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing? So today's one is about Perguza, um, but I didn't want to show it right away because, well, it's not that long actually. The video itself is 15 minutes. I don't have the race, which is unfortunate. Just like I'm bleak, I don't have the race from this weekend's Italian GT. So I'll quickly give you a rundown on that. It was the final round of the Italian GT this weekend. It was the endurance endurance cup if you will of italian gt at monza and uh, sorry about that and um i was racing there with longtime friend person who helped me stay in racing um the doc uh, he was in with a chance of winning the championship unfortunately i was not in with the chance because i missed one of the races to do elms ironically it was the elms race i didn't even race in because of the crash so anyway um we had to win the race to win the championship. Um, three hour race. Our teammate Nicola, Nic Nicola Skiro started first, then the dock went, Stephen Earl, and then I was in the car. Um, but when I got in the car, we were 22 seconds behind the leaders, um, which happened to be Tony Valanda, by the way. I don't know if any of you know him, but um, incredible uh, driver, factory driver for Ferrari from Finland. Um, he was one of like the original Competizione GT factory drivers, and um, I had to hunt him down. I used to always look up to this guy. He's like a, a hero of mine, if you will. And um, yeah, he was 22 seconds in front, uh, but got out there, drove as hard as I could, started to close the gap. Then it started to rain, um, and it was Tony, David Rigon, and me. We were all in like a not a line. But that was the order of events. Uh, I, at, when it started to rain and we were all on slicks, I started to catch Davide. Then that gap stabilized. He decided to box um, for wet tires. And Tony and I stayed out. So I, uh, the only time I had a chance to get the wet tires because of the, you know, the sink of the strategy and so on was the moment Davide went in. 
I was going to go in two laps after him when I decided it was too, it was uh, already too wet, but it was already too late for that. Given the time of the race, I probably wouldn't have made up the gap. So when Rigon went into the pits for the wet tyres, I probably should have gone in as well. Anyway, Tony stayed out in slicks, which meant I had to stay out in slicks, and we had to. I just had to try and hunt him down. And at the end of the 22 second gap, we finished three seconds behind. <sighs> Again, second place. Second place in the race, and for the dock at least, second place in the championship. So, um, I think this that was my last race of the year. I uh, had quite a few podiums, had a little bit of a, a rough patch after our Monza win in LMS. Uh, we had the DNF at Lamar, the DNF at Spa, and the fourth at uh, in Portugal. And then this, you know, I was hoping to get back on the podium, which we did, but I wanted to do it with a win. Um, it was really interesting... The, the slicks and stuff. I don't have a video. This is my whole point. Uh, because I had to leave before the car came out of park for me. And it's the same situation um, for this Pagusa race. Because I did, it was also a three hour race. I did three, I did two of the three hours. I did the first hour and the last hour. In the first hour, we had a puncture at 250 kph at, at just before breaking for a chicane. And luckily, where this puncture occurred, and it wasn't just like a slow puncture, it was like a blowout. Um, it was the corner before the pits. So somehow, and and the lucky thing was when I lost it, there was there was like a, a bit of runoff. So I went over the runoff, boom, 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 and straight into pit lane. Uh, so that would have been cool to show you guys because the, the race itself was crazy. But I do have pretty good footage of Pagusa itself or Ene Perguza, as they say in Italian, and um, without question, craziest track I've ever driven at. So I'm looking forward to showing you that. But I wanted to, just before we do that, I wanted to know if anyone here has played Circuit Superstars. Because I want to give it a quick go. I gave it a dabble the other day, but not enough. Not enough. And um, I wanted to just go through that, just one or two races at one of the tracks, before we roll into uh, Perguza. Then we'll watch Perguza, then we'll do a little bit of ACC, and that will be the stream. Okay, so it's got to do an update. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to showing you that, but you got to be patient. Brett Noel played it for a few minutes, but haven't touched it in over six weeks. Yeah, I played it about, it wasn't six weeks ago, it was maybe like two weeks ago. And then travel started, so I didn't really get a chance. And then when I got back between the travel, there was there was work to do, so I didn't get a chance then. So I thought, well, why not just, you know, play a racing game on a racing stream? We can chat while I'm doing it, and uh, then we can roll from there. So, yeah. Andy, loving the streams of Onboards and ACC, killing it, Dave. Congrats to Lamar Drive. Thank you very much. Looking forward to that. Um, what's also quite unique is that I already know what my whole season looks like next year. And that's because it's also a reduced, it's a reduced season. So uh, The Bentley setups won't be back because Bentley doesn't want us to sell their setups. So, you know, when the lawyers get involved, it's just like, oh, well, we've, we have... Whoa, that's loud, that's loud, that's loud, that's loud. Well, it's loud for me. I don't know if it's loud for you guys. Um, but when lawyers get involved, I step away and just try and keep things, uh, as, you know, as clean as possible. So I've just realized that I need to... Oh, shit. There it is. I need to... Um, the game is open, but I haven't set up a scene for it. So you're going to have to... By the way, I realize that my um, my streaming camera is quite shitty, so uh, I'm gonna have to. I'm working on a replacement for that. I'm open to suggestions, by the way. If you guys have suggestions on, um, there we go. It's working now. Let me just turn off the music, just in case we get banned. Okay, so if you guys have any uh, camera suggestions, let me know. Elgato face cam, you reckon? 
Dilson, Dilson, I hope I'm saying that right. Next week, I'm driving in a full electric F4 car. What? I think I've seen previews of that they're testing out a electric F4 car. Oh, hang on a second. The PlayStation's on. And it's using both. The, the, the remote is working on both the PlayStation and the PC. I've never had that before. I didn't know it could do that. Okay, that thing's turning off. Okay, so yeah, I've seen photos of that F4 car being being tested. Uh, I didn't know it was actually ready though. Oh, this is going to be fun because now, how I, every time I click on, um, every time I click on OBS, the window for Circus Superstars disappears. Oh, boom. Okay, I haven't positioned anything. We're just going to roll like this. At the moment, I do not dig the transition to electric motorsport. I, I kind of dig it. Uh, I'm, I'm there. I watch almost every Formula E race. Um, I, really, I, I really like it. Do I want to race in it? Yeah, I don't know. So what are we going with here? We've got, uh, well, we've got quite a lot. Piccino Cup, Piccino, Piccino, Super Lights, no, Euro Truck, maybe, we're only doing two races. I'm going to go with 50s GT, yeah, I, I'm not good at this game by the way, I'm not good at any games, I love games, I love games, uh, I play PlayStation whenever I get a chance, I'm on the sim whenever I can get a chance, although these days I tend to stream when I'm on the sim. Um, but I've never been good at games. That's why, like, someone the other day was like, oh, we should stream, um, stream you playing, um, Ghosts of Tsushima. No, no, I value my, my life. And, uh, Renfoot, this is, if you look at some of these track maps, by the way, um, they mimic real life tracks, but they've kind of like cartoonized them a little bit. I really like, also, like the unique thing about this game is, um, even though it's top down, the physics are pretty, they feel like, okay, that's what physics would be like in a world like this. So they really nailed it there. You play Metal Gear Solid. I used to, you know, back in the day. Okay, so that's what a GT car looks like. Are we rolling with black? No, of course we're going with red. Let me just double check. Yeah, this is definitely a red situation. Okay. Few minutes of this, then Pirguz is coming. Is there a way? Oh, hang on. Is there a way? Let me just boost the the race volume. To do versus? Like online racing of this? Against mates? Oh shit. Look at the lag. Can I pause it? Yes. I'm pretty sure that was um, not good for you guys. Disable performance mode. Okay. First of all, how's the sound? Whoops. I'm the red car. I'm the red car. This is um, qualifying, I think. a few corners there a bit too, a bit too high alrighty no problem we're gonna have I ever raced in Zolder yes 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 in game could be a bit lower yeah I jacked it I've, I've taken it down by quite a bit whoa it's a bit disorientating at first when you try and play this game if you're not used to top-down, like me, um, getting used to sort of like, if you're not concentrating, like now, when I'm talking to you guys as well as trying to play, I often forget which is like left and right. So you can't, look how cute these things are, man. This is so sick. Okay, P nowhere. 
what is the game called it's called circuit superstars i don't know if it's on ps4 is it on ps is it on playstation While this is happening, you guys need to hit the like button so when we do show the onboards, people will come and watch. That's, the, I mean, that's the key, you know. Meat has traveled. Ulti, I know you're watching. Have you tried this game, dude? Okay. Race one of two. Dirty Dave in the house. I will see if I can find an onboard of me doing Zolder, by the way. I was in the 458, so you get to hear proper engine sound. Oh, baby. That's what you need right there. Probably don't have to break for that one. Frame rate's a bit laggy, I must say. It's not buttery, but that's probably because I should upgrade my graphics card. Although, to be honest, a 2080 should probably be able to cope with this stuff, right? Send it? No. Look at that, track limit penalty a la Gran Turismo. Six laps! We're gonna get lapped at this rate. One day I'm going to dream of hitting apexes. I do, ulti. I do, I do. That little bump there, that's so <laughs> That's so cute because it's like it's simulated from real world where there's a little bump on the road in the in the real life track. So they almost like snuck in a little bit of, of laser scanning, even though they've cut out corners here. Come on! Whoa! Get off the track. Oh my god. Still better than high racing. I don't know, I'm enjoying high racing at the moment. I just don't get a chance to play championships. But what you guys can do is, next week, I'm doing the virtual Lamar. I wish I could show you that testing that I do, but I'm not allowed to, obviously. Because Ferrari would not be stoked. Oh, David, come on. Imagine the eSports championship that comes from this. So on the last lap I almost got the vibe of how to drive around this instead. Uh, check the graphic settings that it's not set to 60 hertz. Yeah, it's, it's on borderless. I'm just double checking. My monitor box is up there somewhere. I can't see. I've, it's covered by other boxes to make double check that it's 144 hertz. Alrighty. <laughs> it was FFP in the six motion platform. Did we just win a new car? No, a new design. Okay. Okay, one more go. But that was, these things don't have enough power. I'm going with Rally. And, well, I don't know. I wish they showed you an actual layout. Maple Ridge, whatever. I mean, sure.
I'm telling you, this sim game, you guys have to give it a try. It's just like, it's fun to hang around in. Maybe not on a stream, but okay, I'm definitely going to suck in this one. Now are we racing? No, this is quali. So this is the learning the track lap. I think I've actually driven around this track, but I'm not going to remember it. Woo! Where, where are we going? That way. Look at this sneaky bugger. P8 again, oh come on. Is there a custom BOP? This game is called Circuit Superstars. Circuit Superstars. Is there a custom BOP? I don't know. I doubt it. Callow sent me this by the way. With some energy stuff that I will try eventually, but how cool is that little bottle? Nice little design as well. How are you meant to drink from this thing? Yeah, there's rubber on the track. I know. I know. They tried to literally build in physics into a top-down racing game. So it, it, it creates this really like, even though you can't feel it, you know. Yeah, imagine trying to... Oh my god, no. You can't race with the steering wheel. Brett. So we just send it. No. Uh oh I've got some like horrible feedback in the in my headphones Sending it. Sorry, buddy. Wheel on the gra gravel. Yeah, baby, no brakes there.
This AI is damn quick, right? I mean, these racing lines are like poetry, man. Come on, send it! Oh no, that's a lap car. <laughs> I got excited. Damn it! I don't know why the stream is at 360. That's probably because of YouTube. My bitrate is... No, no, I mean, it should be quite high at the moment. Let me just double check on my phone. But, um... Yeah, it's because this game is epic. It feels good. Not sure why the uh, the stream is what it is. All right. So... Let's see here. Yeah, it does seem low quality. Oh, well, you're going to have to deal with it. Uh, you can watch in, on a HD. Okay, so dig that. That's a cool game. That's a cool game. Yeah, a 55 inch, you're not going to get much if I'm honest. Close window. Okay, so now, as a reward for sticking around, I'm joking. We're going to do that more often. Like next week, I want to play a bit more Gran Turismo, for example. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to do, let's look at uh, Pagusa, no? Let's check out this bad boy. Okay, so I'll start with, whoa, we're just going to jump around a little bit. We'll start with a bit of free practice, okay? Um, D-Box, there we go. Performance mode, and you guys are going to have to help me with the sound. Actually, let me just quickly disable performance mode just to see. Oh, that's very loud, yeah? How's about that? Is that too loud? Okay, cool. Alright, so this is me exiting the pits. Taking over from the dark. This is free practice too. Hello. Okay. So first of all, let your mates know that we've got some onboard stories going on. This is free practice two. Um, in free practice one, I struggled a little bit to learn the track because the car was so snappy. At the beginning of the, the session, I just sort of, um, I just, uh, free practice one, I just wanted to feel the car a little bit. And it was way too twitchy on, on, um, uh, on turning. So, at a high speed track like this where you have to really sort of um, I don't know you have to you have to commit so early and so hard into the corner if you have a a, a snappy or over responsive steering and, and snappy rear end um, you're gonna you're not gonna have the confidence you're gonna be way off the pace and I think initially I couldn't even break into the 30s or something I think I was doing like a 41 everyone was um, and by qualifying we were into the low 30s I think so yeah this track oh I'll turn it down a little bit more this track is um uh very old school it came back into I don't know use in 2018 but n barely anyone uses it they had like a Creventic race here uh, last year or something like that and um and since then not much usage so at least these first two sessions the tracks quite dirty but i can tell you now yeah this is this is the one in sicily um around a lake it's insane uh, i can tell you now the most surprising thing about this track was the lack of tire degradation it was very similar to like what we experienced at portugal or portimao which has incredible grip but in Portimao, every lap you do is faster than the previous lap because the effect, the fuel effect is greater than the tire deck. And it seems like for some reason here was the same situation. That's a GD4. Look at this crazy chicane over here. It's just wide enough. Oh no. Oh. It's just wide enough. I was in the wrong window. 
look at that. It's just wide enough for, for the car. Now, what was crazy is that a lot of um, drivers during this event were losing rear view mirrors. In fact, if you paid attention, I lost, uh, I was avoiding someone's mirror at the beginning of this lap. Um, their mirror got clipped off in one of the chicanes. Now you see these massive tire walls, they move. If you touch them, they move. So what was happening was that this tire wall on the right, if you were behind someone and they kind of misjudged it or, or got too close to the, the tire wall, there was instances where the rear wings of our cars were just clipping the tire wall a little bit and moving it forward onto the racing line. In in the race, in my second stint, which I can't show you, I was right behind Giancarlo Fisichella, who went through this left-hander, and when he went through the right, he pulled the tire wall onto my line, and I had to somehow avoid it. Now, here's the funniest bit. Okay. This track is dangerous as it is. There's no runoff. You've got these tire walls, which you can hit. Um... It's it's insane. I don't think this chicane was in the game, by the way. But anyway, over there, if you can see my mouse, are the marshals. That's where you crash. So if you hit the tire wall, look, you're basically going towards the marshals. Who thought of that? Who? Whose idea was that? So, yeah. Um, very interesting. Now, the funny thing is, okay, you've got these two tire walls there that move, all right? I'm going to tell you a story about driver's briefing at the end of this lap. Here's a long right-hander. Yeah, this is the chicane of death um, in real life, okay? So you go around this long uh, right-hander, which is easy flat, and then there's more chicanes. This is a track of chicanes, but it's one of the most exciting tracks I've ever raced at. And I know that this particular free practice video, you can't see much. But luckily, the qualifying video, you can see quite a bit. But, you know, I just want to give you a lowdown. Yeah, safety-wise, whatever. This is old school, people. This is old school. All right. So, we're heading now to the first couple of chicanes, okay? Now, in particular, I think it was... Okay, so we're going to here. And we asked them, can we have tire walls here to stop us bringing on... The, we were bringing on a lot of gravel, so it was almost like rally cross. On the racing line okay can you please put a tie wall here so we stop cutting they said to us it's too dangerous can you believe this shit but it was great I loved it okay so into here boom that's turn one turn two turn three I lost a review mirror here in qualifying against that tie wall Maximize the curve there, down to second, and then they put a tie wall here to stop us bringing gravel onto the, the track. Yeah, now we head down this, oh, everything's a long straight here. We head down this long, long straight here, and uh, we now break for another chicane. But now, this chicane, at, I think in this practice I was avoiding the curve quite a bit. I was driving around it. No, nope. there we go. Hitting a DTM, old school DTM style, and then cutting there, cutting here. Yeah, this track is mental. Now we're going to that um, death chicane. Do you have a mental checklist of different things you're trying to focus on? Well, first, the first thing you've got to do is get used to reference points. So you need your own reference points for the track, where you, like where you're going to look when you're braking. Where you can look for the apexes, where you can look for the exit. Do you even look at the apex? Do you look immediately at, at the exit? That's step one. Just doing that, and you always base to start. Oh, yeah, I went too deep. You start your um, reference points usually around the hundred board, and you work your way forwards or backwards. It depends on the track. But generally, in a GT car, you're braking. GT3 car, you're braking like around the hundred. So that's kind of where you base things. So here, I think we break at the pit exit line. Um, and then I'm just looking through this wall. I want to look at this curb here, but I want to maximize there. And now I'm, I'm looking at the tire wall, and now I'm looking at the wall on the exit. Because if you run wide, you're going to hit that wall. And then probably here, I'm already looking at the second apex. And while you're doing all this, um, that's a very conscious thing. Subconsciously, you're, you're starting to um, understand how the car is feeling, how it's reacting. 
is it turning in when I want it to turn in? Like, is it reacting to the input that I'm that I'm looking for? And um, that's that's basically where we are. Woo! Luckily, this track has lots of runoff, so I'm over slowing because I don't want to do a, a fast lap here. And then when we look at the data, this is the best lap, and then it starts to look like it, I was flying it through the chicane. So, so it's it's not in your interest to um, go through those corners and cut them and just keep pushing. Yeah, this track is built around a lake because you can see it when you're there. So, yeah, just an absolutely crazy racetrack. So you can see here, 138.3, I think in this session I dropped to like a 137, 136 maybe? There we go, 136. So let's just go back. We can watch this tr lap four. But just keep in mind, qualifying is coming next, and that's what we're going to focus on in this video. And I'll keep quiet for that one. Are these laps used? Yeah, yeah, you don't have... Okay, so in real life GT racing, you do not have infinite practice. There are some weekends... <laughs> there are some weekends, thanks Andrea, where if you're lucky, you maybe get seven flying laps before qualifying. If you're doing qualifying, if you're not doing qualifying, it means you get seven flying laps before the race. Okay, so every lap you do, in spite of track conditions, you're working on setup. The thing is, though, like very often we don't actually revolutionize the setup. Now, this is where it gets important. Hey, Mike, what's happening? Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Yao, our broadcaster with SimGrid, best broadcaster in the world. Um, uh, where was I? Oh, where experience is important, how do engineers do setup with seven laps? Well, you come with a baseline. You don't start from zero. You come with a baseline, you work it out. And also, it's not just me doing seven laps. It's it's each driver, and then we give feedback, and then, you know, some drivers get more laps than others. So, but I'm just saying, it depends. Like, if you're the guy who's responsible for setup, sometimes you're the only, like, let's say your co-drivers are too slow. They're there to have fun. Da, da, da. They need the most time in the car for enjoyment. They're paying for it. You are their paid professional. You are expected from lap one to be on the pace. You are expected from lap one to know how the car feels and what it's missing. Sometimes we are only given one or two laps to give feedback in the car. They'll make a quick change and then they'll get the other drivers into the car. That's what I was getting to here. With experience and with experience, you start to learn what to look for in spite of having bad tires, in spite of the track being greasy, in spite of one or two corners um, having gravel um, on, on the line or whatever, despite having bad brakes because it's free practice one. and You, you learn what to look for it, around those things. You learn what to feel. You're like, okay, well, when the track's dirty and I have understeer, it feels like this. When the track's clean and I have understeer, it feels like this. So, so I can feel that the understeer I'm feeling now is not the car, it's the track. So I'm not going to tell the guys that I have understeer. I'm actually going to tell them to watch out for oversteer. I almost went into the wall there. Holy shit. Yeah, so that's kind of how it works, especially in endurance racing where you have to share the car lot. You know, like... Even in F1, you'll hear times where they say, I, I barely changed the car in practice. I just went around and around. I mean, they, they do have the benefit that the car is just for them. DTM is the same. So in, in those instances, you don't really... Yeah, you don't really get a chance. I mean, in our instance, we don't really always get a chance to, to just go out five flying laps in, make a change, out five... Because free practice one could be 90 minutes. Okay, 90 minutes between three drivers with out laps and in laps, it's like six, seven laps per driver. So, yeah. I do have an opinion about the DTM finale, but uh, I'm not going to share them here. Okay, 36 1. Looked like I was on the limit, all right? Now, what's crazy is we go two seconds quicker than that, 2.2 seconds quicker than that um, on the next run. So now we're going to qualifying. Okay, this is me starting the lap. There's a car in front of me. I think it was... I can't remember who it was. But here's an interesting thing for you guys to consider. Okay. 
Um, during the session, there was a red flag. When the red flag hit, I was in pole position overall. And I knew that I had about six tenths in the pocket. I knew that I could go fast in one or two areas. Okay. Now, because I'm a silver rank driver, for me to be on pole position is a risk because you don't want to be upgraded. I've already covered this many times. For those of you watching the first time, if you're ever upgraded um, as a driver from bronze to silver or silver to gold, that often means it's the end of your career for at least a short time. You're going to lose almost all of your opportunities. Um, so here I land up on provisional pole and I realize that that's probably not the best for me. So after the red flag, I don't go out again and someone else who's a silver rank driver ends up getting pole. Now thinking back to it, I would have really have liked to have gone for the pole position. Um, I didn't get any poles this year. I usually like, despite me not being the best qualified, I do kind of, ma I do manage a pole a season almost. Um, but this year not. And I felt like in this time here, I should have, it was, an, it's a national championship. It's not European. So, you know, there's a little bit more leadway, leeway. And I, I regret not just at least seeing if I could have gotten it because I felt like I had six tenths in the pockets, but it's possible that I didn't, but I wouldn't know. Promotion is a bad thing because every, every endurance class needs at least a bronze and usually a silver. Now, you want to be a fast silver at the top of your silver rankings, but you don't want to be a fast silver and a slow gold. And in the gold category especially, there's a lot of incredibly fast gold and platinum ranked drivers, factory drivers. So if you go from silver to gold, if you're not a factory driver, you're not going to race. I'm silver. Okay, so this, is, this was the out lap. I'm preparing for the first flying lap now. I don't even know where we are because there's so many chicanes. Oh, yeah, okay. Let's just skip the out lap. No, 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 screw it. We're going to watch the whole thing. I don't know who I'm following here, by the way. I'm not sure. But now, no one's been here before. We don't know what tire pressures to run. Um, and it's, it's an unknown for everyone. Whoops. Also, you don't want to use the curves too much on the outlap with Pirellis. I don't mean like these curves, those are nothings. But those big curves on a cold Pirelli with low pressures, it's not a cold Pirelli, but on a Pirelli with low pressures, you'll break the sidewall. So, got to be careful about that. Now, often, often, especially recently with Pirelli tires, your first flying lap is the only fast one. I think we covered this in Barcelona. So, while I'm preparing this lap, I haven't done, no one's done qualifying here before in a GT3, especially modern ones. You're thinking to yourself, shit, the next lap has to be the best lap. I can't push on this lap because there's long straights, tire pressures are dropping, it's an out lap. And if I touch the curbs, so in other words, if I'm really pushing, I'm going to lose, I'm going to damage the tire. So I can't do that. But my first flying lap is probably when the tire is at its best. I hope not. I hope not. In free practice, we didn't really have new tires because uh, you, you don't just get infinite free uh, uh, used tires. Uh, you don't get infinite new tires. Okay, you get used tires um, from the previous race. And usually, what happens is if you do end up using a new tire in practice, you're stealing it either from qualifying or the race. It depends on the the championship and tire allocation. I'm guessing that the baseline for here was something similar to, to Monza. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, ACC is a bit too sensitive with curb riding and, and tire pressure loss. A bit too sensitive. Okay, so starting the lap, looking here, you can't really see, but the tire temps are around 70, 60, 1.7. And that tire pressure reading is not correct. So we're in the window. Now is the tire ready? We don't know. So let's start the first flying lap. And let's hope I don't mess it up. So 
because you only get one shot usually okay so in this instance we do got more than one shot you have to make sure that you nail it on the first lap now i know that when you look at the steering ratio it will look like i have a lot of understeer but note that the car is rotating the car is rotating hey dennis what's happening man hope you're well bro My delta here could be anything, by the way. It's not always that it's your best lap from practice. It could be sometimes your delta doesn't pick up the the radar. So, I mean, your, your lap timer. I love that corner. That corner as well. It was like you knew that if you touch that curb wrong, um, you were going to bottom out and then fire yourself into an armco barrier. But nothing beats what we're heading into here. Now what's crazy is here in, in qualifying, which was still day one, because it was a two-day event. So when we drove this track the first time, it was in the morning. So this is the evening qualifying. Yellow gloves will stay for life. Um, anyway, that chicane there in the quali, I was taking it in third, and I thought I was absolutely on the limit. But in the race, I was taking it in fourth. Mess that up. Thirty-five two. Ran deep. So I'm gonna abort the lap. Now did I run deep? Um did I run deep because the tire's going off? Or cause the track's dirty, or because I was braking too late, was I asking too much of the car? This is where experience counts, because if you don't know those things, like early in my career, which is only five years ago, I didn't know that. I thought that I was, I always thought that every mistake I made, or every time I missed an apex, it was my mistake, and only my mistake. But now I've learned like, oh no, I missed the apex because, you know, the tire wasn't ready, or because I tried a line that didn't work. Um, you know, those kinds of things, you know, so it's not the end of the world, just try just try prepare again don't psych yourself out it's not it's not a fundamental it's not a fatal mistake it's very important um the rev lights it depends you can calibrate them the rev lights i think i'm changing too late here to be honest i should change now as soon as you see the, the red light now a little bit too late but depends if when your adrenaline's pumping you'll change gear too late trust me okay so avoid I, even though this lap is useless i don't want to lose tire temperature because of the long straights so preparing uh the car this is one of the best car setups i've driven in a gd3 car so i absolutely loved 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 driving this specific car and setup it was just phenomenal just quickly want to go back you see this this um gravel here you got to ignore that you see that it's like it's not gravel it's actually dry grass um if you just look at that you think to yourself oh shit i'm gonna slide off but you don't have that opportunity in real life when you are the pro you have to push so it's not really nervous the rear is solid as a rock The car is rotating, though, which is just magical. Honestly, I, this car was... I wish I could go back to this qualifying session and do it again and again. No gold status for me, no. If I go gold, guys, there's no more onboard videos. It's game over for me if I go gold. Simulator setups are completely different to real life setups. In simulators, we try and make them feel more like a cart as, as opposed to. So, simulator setups, the fast ones, are more rear bias. Like they have much more twitchy. And those don't work in real life because you, you can't turn the car, you'll just crash.
I'm flashing the car in front. Half a second up on the Delta. That was a good exit. I think this may be my best lap. Thirty for one, no no, we still have another one. Oh a bit deep, but look, the delta's green. I'm still quicker. That was one I couldn't actually explain. Third gear instead of oh. let's listen there. I lose my rearview mirror there. So at least you can say I'm pushing. <laughs> you hear that like I suppose it's a there's, oh, there's a review mirror. So I think Zampieri is in front of me. There it is there. Now, every time those things come off, by the way, it's around 2,000 euros. Like 1,500, 2,000 euros a review mirror. Okay. Wild. And one of the Ferrari teams lost five in one day and two in the race. I lost two. So I cost my co-driver a little bit of money. So, okay, lap aborted. No crying. No crying about traffic. No crying about all those other variables. You just have to get on with it. You have to get on with it. Maybe I'm crying a little bit. That, when I, that there is the radio button. So probably said, ah, oh, this lap is aborted. taking it easy now. So another lap aborted. Yeah, nipper no, dog, that's normal. In fact, one of my friends today got a, a note from the FIA saying that they would not downgrade him from gold. He used to be silver. He raced all the time. He got upgraded to gold because he was doing phenomenally well. And he hasn't driven in two years. Okay? So he messaged the FIA and said, hey, look, based on my lap times, I should have never been upgraded to gold. Can you downgrade me to silver? And he said no. So his career is basically over. Uh, no, the lake didn't smell particularly bad. Okay, let's go for another lap. That was nice. Third gear instead of second. I'm just hoping you stay on the racetrack. And there you want to get on the power as early as you can because that chicane leads into a massively long straight. We are three tenths up right now. Oh uh, yeah, Lamar's confirmed. So imagine in the race we were doing that every single lap. Yes, um, brake balance we adjust as the weight comes off. Well, I do. Some drivers don't, but I do. Still three tenths up, but I think I bottle the chicane. Damn it. I lose about a one and a half tenth there, I think. 33.9. Lost the rear, but still green. It's going to go red now. Nope. See, you just go faster and faster. You drive faster. It's just... This, this track, it was the only track where after every single session I drove... I was shaking afterwards. I was like full of adrenaline because it's so 
damn fast. It's just so fast. It's nothing like anything else I've driven. I've driven at fast racing tracks. Monza, even Spa is a quick track and scary the first time you drive it. But nothing is as like flat out as this experience. Honestly, I could drive here a million, just so many times. What's that noise? Sounds like someone's in the house. David's murders filmed live. Second gear does not work through there in qualifying speed. Oh, that was nice. I wish I got that the lap before. Uh, the car is lively. The cars move around a lot, you know. But also, like, I tend... Oh, that's fireworks. I tend to... Prov like, I am a shadow boxer. I think the car will maybe not be moving, but my hands will be counter-steering. <laughs> Holy shit, I forgot about that. Let's replay. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was almost a crash. Weight usually comes off. You usually go rear with... Uh, it depends, it depends, it depends, it depends. I bought that lap, I think. So at this point, I'm on pole by six tenths of a second. Uh, ah. Track limits is, depends on the racetrack, depends on the series. I think there were track limits here, but I can't remember where. So now I'm probably telling my team to box. We we're almost at the end here, sadly. No, is it a red flag now? I'm maybe trying to cool the tires. I don't know, I don't remember. This was like six months ago. I've been Oh wow, they really are pretty good fireworks going on. Okay, let's see. Maybe I was just like giving myself space. Maybe I was trying to mental reset because I was pushing harder, 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 and there I just I lost the rear, almost crashed, and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You need to know when you're just going over when you're overdriving, that's not always obvious, you know. When are you overdriving, can you dial it back? You're not talking to the best qualifier in the world here, by the way. So, I'm not like a Marcello or Bortolotti or P or Rigon. Who just gets in and it's like, BAM! I, I tend to, like, get there. And whenever there's a qualifying session which requires more than one flying lap, um, I qualify better. I have gotten much better at first lap qualifying. But I'm, you know, I'm not... I'm not by any stretch uh, one of the masters of qualifying. So this is just a, like a good example of me trying to push the limits. Yeah, they told me I'm on pole position by like a mile. So I'm like, cool, well, there you go. Um, there's pit, ex uh, pit entry, by the way. And that's important because in the race, I had a failure. I had the failure coming down this straight, maximum speed. All right. And we break it just before the 100. There's the 100. We break like somewhere here the puncture happened before this moment and the, the tire exploded so luckily I um, I could go straight here over there and then I went into the box over there so that was very lucky otherwise the race would have been we actually ended up winning this race which I was pretty sorry okay let's see if I can give it one more go Oh, you know, that's not good. Woo! <laughs> okay. That's a no. figured out the reverberation that you can hear is the camera shaking in the cover okay so that marks I think the end of my quali we just go forward a little bit code dirt 
No, we go again. <laughs> One more time. This is abnormal that the tire can last this long. By the way, it's always good when you, you, your delta starts green, by the way. That's that thing over there. It's white now. It's green. You can see now, now you can see where the car has a lively rear end. So now the rear tires are gone. They're overheated or the tire pressure is too high. Tire wear. Now you can see, okay, you guys kept saying the car is twitchy earlier, but I said, no, the rear is solid. This is what it looks like when the rear isn't solid. So let's just do this again. Watch the rear come around here, there, there, and here. See there? That, that is what happens when the rear goes. Uh, we always leave the ABS at like 3. There's a lot of settings. I can see, I definitely remember here it saying, tires are gone, we should just box a slap, I've tried, I just don't think I can go faster, something like that. See the delta is red there, just before, below, the, below the, the gear indicator. in the race we were going through there faster than here you always find speed after some sleep no matter who you are so. yeah you can make TC adjustments in quality but if you're just we, we start qualifying generally with very low TC like 3 and 3 or something something low like that and if you're going up with the TC, it means it's probably too late, and the tire's gone already. So in the race, you adjust TC a lot and brake balance, because you can use it, do it to box box. Okay, so that's it. And I think it ended up being a red flag in any case, so it was just well timed. A lot of cars in the box. And then they went out again for another shot at pole. In a GT3 cup car. No, I haven't. Dirk, how you doing, my man? Boom. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Today's onboard story brought to you by Coach Dave. So now we're going to jump into um, ACC. But before I do that... Should we check if, I want to see if um, there's any daily races that I'd be interested in doing. Monza. Woo! That's not meant to happen. Brake bias. Uh, we don't speak in the in the normal English terms. Let's say in the Ferrari, you you push the brakes until you see one of the numbers go to 50, and then you see what the other reading is. 5032, 5041, 55, a uh, 5055. So it's not what you guys know to be brake balance. Okay, so in 27 minutes. We can do Zolder, so let's sign up for that. If. Hmm. If. We can. That's not my password, by the way. That's someone else's password. I'm not joking. If we're good enough, even if there's enough people to do this thing. Because oftentimes you guys don't like to do Zolder for some reason. I don't really like Zolder to be honest. Do you guys like Zolder? It's not. It's just because of the way that the um. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, getting blinded here. Oh. There is. Where is the V box? There are five people entered in this race. 
including ulti. So um, come and join me, please. For those of you who want to join us, Daily Race B ulti, stick a link in here, my man. And um, let's have some fun. It's it's a dry race. It's 25 minutes, and it's at Zolder, which is, a, in my opinion, a cart a cart track. I probably have to do an update to ACC because of that latest um, exploit. What the hell happened to my... TGT2 uh, base and the Ferrari um, SF1000 wheel. The exploit was fixed. The exploit was fixed. But it was um, like you could modify the JSON file and like really screw with the rod lengths to give you like extreme camber and that would not be checked on the first load of the setup. So you could run illegal camber. But I don't think that um, anyone could have truly exploited it accurately because we have experience because we have the console wizard for ACC setups for, for our console players. We have to read the JSON file. And to decode those rod lengths was impossible. Like, it was ridiculous. So, no. I just think Kunos didn't know that that... Well, these exploits are always discovered, like, by finding out a, a loophole. And um, Kunos do check the setup, but not on first load. If you go into the setup screen, they check the setup. If you don't go into the setup screen, for, for whatever reason, they just won't, but they fix it immediately. Now, how many sim racing companies do you know who do stuff like that? Who spot the problem and are immediately on it? Not many telling you now so full credit to them when they knew about it it was yeah they were onto it have you seen the video of a guy driving a bmw where he has insane acceleration i have not what's going on here that's oh, almost complete Yeah, kudos did a mega job, honestly. I wonder if my internet just stopped working. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Steam. Boom. Okay. Computer's not coping. Hey, George, how are you doing? Computer is not coping. I wonder why that is. Okay. Now let's try open ACC. Are the brakes more realistic in ACC or iRacing? They are weird for different reasons. In ACC, it feels like you're not stopping sometimes. And that's always the biggest adjustment I have to make. When I'm not, I haven't played ACC for a while, stopping the car, I always miss the brake zone like the apex i'm like ah, oh shit there it was and um i racing the rear is too alive it's too easy to lock it's too easy to slide the rear it's too easy to spin compared to real life okay we're gonna have to do another sound check in a moment but anyway i also need to um oh look at that the reason why game capture wasn't working is because I had it set to circuit superstars. Whoops. And now, there it is. Okay, there we go. Thanks, George. You just missed, if you weren't watching, you just missed us going over um, Pergusa. Pergusa. I wish I knew how to say it properly. I wish I could speak Italian.
Zolda. Ferrari? Yes. Well, you know, there's close to... iRacing is an enjoyable sim to drive, but it's, in my opinion, not the most realistic. The closest we have to GT cars, GT cars, is ACC, in my opinion, without a doubt. But there's still some way to go as well. So, do you ever drive in anger? Ah, no, I mean, I don't get angry when I'm driving. Um, I have overdriven, though. There's no doubt about that. But I don't necessarily drive in anger, no. These are the old setups. Let me just get the new ones. Where's Dropbox? There it is. Oh shit. Helps when you... I need to... Copy these bad boys. And then... Navigate my way to... ACC. Which is obviously not on that drive. Charming. I've lost my way around this freaking thing. Okay, we're just going to have to roll with the old setups because I can't find my folder. Woo! I missed a lot there. I have no current plans to come to South Africa, sadly. Am I going to be in Spa? Uh, when? To get into F1 racing, nah. Uh, I find that I get nervous when I'm in the groove. Uh, if you get nervous and you make mistakes, my advice is to um, focus on your reference points. Okay, now let me just double check that we are streaming the right stuff here. Is that right? right. Show them what you got. Yeah. Okay, you guys let me know if the sound is okay. How do I turn on the car again? There we go. Maybe cars a bit too quiet. Okay, let me do two laps and then I will adjust it. I fully expect to finish last out of five in tonight's daily race.
See there? Whoops. I break too late. I did break too late. I think this track is cool in a GT4, but I think it's too small for a GT3. That's why. I don't really have a suggestion on where you should run your force feedback because um, we don't have torque readings or anything uh, in the real car. I'm driving slowly so I can talk here. But I will say that I just leave my force feedback on standard. Whatever the settings are from the game, that's what I usually leave them at. In iRacing I turn it up because that is the worst force feedback in the world. So. Um, pedals I use are the, uh, the, th the new Thrustmaster ones, I've just forgotten the name. That understeer that I get there always drives me nuts. Okay, let's try to get a lap in before this, this session starts. How much data is used in GD3 racing? A shit ton. And a, a real shit ton. Yeah. save the tires in general by not sliding and that sounds so obvious but there's a lot of tricks to that as well you can shorten corners by the way which reduces tire wear how do you shorten corners um difficult to explain well it's not i can't explain i just i want to get some laps in before the daily race but you, you shorten the time you spend turning. If you are able to figure that one out, in other words, if you can make your rotation happen in a short, shorter distance, you will save your tires more. The more grip you have, the more um, liberty you can take with running a longer corner. But that's how you save your tires. Come on. Yeah, my Thrustmaster deal ended, but I'm not about to change my equipment. I actually like the equipment. My, my, my experience with Thrustmaster started with me buying all of the Thrustmaster equipment. I used to have the other, the other brand, but I ended up swapping that for Thrustmaster stuff. Liked it. We spoke. They ended up sponsoring me. Um... So yeah, right now, uh, I just use what I want. I have an amazing set of pedals ready and waiting, but they don't work on PlayStation. And they were a gift from my mate Nick Foster. I just haven't had a chance to install them because I still do some Gran Turismo Sports coaching. So, yeah. Uh, no, not a later Apex necessarily. A steeper Apex. Or a V-line. Or you overslow the apex speed, but it allows you to get to 100% throttle quicker. It's easier said than done, though. Because um, even though I technically know these things, there's been times where I have completely lost my feeling for the car or whatever. And I can't apply any of my techniques to it.
need a little bit more front bias here. Whoa! To settle the rear. So. Pretty is quite front. front. I love F1. I just don't like the um, the racing game. It's not a. I think Circuit Superstars is better. Yeah, I've driven at Suzuka. I was on pole there actually in real life. I miss those days. Returning to garage. Aero. There's the problem for me. As I've told you guys before, I'm not a fan of pitch in mid-engine cars. I always run neutral, no matter what setup it is or who it's from. Hey, no worries, Brett. Thanks for watching, my man. Have I ever raced? I wish I'd raced an F1 car, but that's a definite no. Oh, I keep starting. Those, glo those gloves never arrived. Don't worry, Tristan. I'm going to send you another pair. Can you send me an email? I think we communicated by email last time. Drop me an email and I'll make sure another pair gets sent, like racing gloves or something. Oh, oh you can actually ride it. Uh, this is just practice. Just preparing for the daily race in like three minutes. Cut it a bit too much there. I use a 2080, I think, TI. 
a graphics card. We're going in way too fast. Yeah, TC5 and 5 because it's got a high level of torque. Well, the thing is, if you run it on lower TC, you're going to get snap. So in the game, if you run 5 and 5, it matches with the torque. Running 5 and 5 here with the new version of the, of the Ferrari Evo. It's like running 2.233 on the 2018 version. Yeah, the server will only load on the hour. It's not, it only starts at the hour. Uh, pork chop Steve, so Steve. Oh, come on, I just want to hit one apex. Um, the key to ACC is get the most RAM you can and the the best graphics card you can find and then don't even then don't run it on high especially not in an online race run it at medium Oh, no, too slow.
server is live. Okay, no rush. There's five minutes to. Actually, you have until the end of qualifying to to log into the server. So yeah, for those of you who don't know, the daily racing servers they fire up on the hour, or if it's starting, if the, if the website says 17:30, that's when the server starts. What? Why did it log me out of Discord? Oh, God, don't worry. ACC just went down. No, come on. Ah, oh, shit. So you set the maximum comfortable rake and then trim the front wing or balance. Um, Polsky, there's no. Yeah, for me it's also down. Damn. We we have to end the stream early. We'll probably end with the circus superstars. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, that means look, if the servers if the servers are down for ACC, it also means that our servers won't fire up. So that's a bummer. Um, yeah, so Polsky, th the right setup procedure is well. You need to know what you what you like. Let's see if that thing. Yeah, you need to know what you like. Do you like an understeering car? Do you like an oversteering car? When you start with the setup, every baseline for every track is different. In sim racing, in ACC, you could always just start with your Barcelona baseline. Um, <laughs> don't worry I'm going to tell Chad that our sim grid ratings will not be affected by this downage so that's a bummer that the server lifts aren't loading no <sighs> that's a bummer okay well, we're going to then end the stream as we started. So those of you who want to get an early night, thank you so much for watching. For those of you who want to watch me race Circuit Superstars one more time, stick around. Because that's where we're going. Maybe those servers will load. Can't believe that ACC is down. Maybe it's because they're getting an update. I mean, we do some new content. That is for sure. We do some new content. Thanks, Tim. Thanks to everyone who signed up and didn't get to race. What a waste. We're going to end with one new BMW M4. It hasn't raced yet, guys. There's no BOP for it or anything. What's this online thing here? Oh, look, you can create lobbies. Some grid circuit superstars. Okay. Their next sim is only come. It's AC2. They said they're working on it, so. I'm not sure why you guys are so excited about these cars in the game. I'm much more excited about tracks. I mean, all cars in, in Sims, they're based off a similar chassis in that a BMW M4 will still feel like ACC, you know. So I suspect it's going to feel a little bit like, uh... oh, this isn't the track I was meant to load, but anyway, this looks like Budapest or something. Woo! Oh, these cars are fast. I think that the BMW M4 is going to feel like the Aston and the um, and the Lexus. I think it's going to feel more like the Lexus than the Aston. That's me getting confused with what's right, left or right, as I told you last time.
P8, P7. What do you drive outside of daily race of racing? What's my? Do you mean what's my um, daily driver? Daily driver was an Audi S3. Oh, look at these guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. The pressure levels are. Look at this guy. The savagery. <laughs> Um, I sold the S3 about two weeks ago because it had this irritating uh, bug with the dashboard that only exists in London. Can you believe it? It's actually the worst car I've ever owned, most frustrating car I've ever owned, and I'm. This is coming from a massive Audi fan, someone who like every car I've ever owned is almost. I think yeah, all but two have been an Audi. I wish there was a restart button. That's the one thing this game needs. Let's restart the race, man. Come on, man. Is it possible? No, there's just reposition. So yeah, the, I had this issue with the car where the dashboard would reset and for six months they said it's going to be fixed and it never got fixed and it turns out it's related to the cell phone towers because Audi's trying to be smart with you know Tesla-esque dashboards and so on but they can't get the tech right so I'm not a fan at the moment of the latest modern cars because they're so full of bugs um, and it's the third Audi S3 I've owned by the way I've owned all the previous generation when I could finally afford a car, um, I, I went immediately and looked at the Audi. But now I've sold it. I sold it back to Audi actually. Because... Look, you see the physics? This game is legendary! Even Gran Turismo doesn't have flipping cars. Come on, man. I would say, um, yeah, the next car I get, it's not going to be a Tesla. Woo! Um, yeah, Matt, I don't think you have the latest S3, though, because it only got launched at the beginning of this year. I had the, I have the latest S Audi S3. Let me try to get a photo. I'll show you guys. Let me... Switch to face cam. The previous S3 is fine because it's not connected to the internet all the time. The latest Audis are connected to the internet. And that is the problem. The problem is in the UK, those uh, the latest Audis are losing connection with the cell phone towers in certain parts of London. And what happens is, when it does that, the entire dashboard resets. The entire dashboard resets, and you lose your navigation and all that. Now, I've lived in London for like three or four years. I don't know London that well. I've never driven around there until recently, because prior to owning this car, I couldn't afford a car. I was just using public transport. So I'm not exactly, I haven't got a PhD in London navigation. And when I was in Europe, the car was fine. I used the car to get to Europe. I'm trying to find a photo here. Okay, I mean, this number plate's null and void now anyway, so... But that was my car. It's pretty cool. It was cool. I was proud. 
I had earned this car on my own after literally arriving here with zero money in the bank. And it turned out to be a dud. So emotionally, not, not all there. Okay, so one more go, one more go. I love this game. <laughs> Yo, you can. Look, they said that they're releasing an update. And the funny thing is when I sold the car back to them, um, they said order an RS3. And I did, just for fun. I didn't have to pay for the deposit or anything. Um, and I'm hoping that when that thing arrives, everything will be fixed. But, yeah, it's not. So I'm not going to... I'm not going to use it until until they fix that stuff. But anyway, look. My dream 3 car garage. Audi RS6. Porsche 911 GD3 Touring. And a Ferrari F12. And it's the Ferrari F12 in particular. Which I look at every single day of my life. I want one more than anything. So if I'm not spending money on an Audi S3. Which has bugs in it. I'm using that money to save for one day to own my dream car. Which is a Ferrari. I didn't make a profit on the S3, but um, I did get some money back because at the moment the market is very frothy, frothy. And I knew that, by the way. I do look at markets quite a lot, and I knew that um, you can't, you cannot order a new car at the moment in, in most countries, including the UK. So Audi was like, "Hey, look, if, if you don't want your car, we'll buy it back from you." So it's like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" Too fast in. You know, the fundamentals of driving, they apply to any racing game that you play, including Mario Kart and Ridge Racer. If you go too fast into a corner, you're going to understeer off the track, whether you're playing ACC or Gran Turismo or iRacing. That's why I always jokingly say, half jokingly, that I could coach you in in Mario Kart and you'd still be able to use those lessons in other sims. By the way, besides the software errors in the S3, the car is fucking mega. The handling and everything, the sound is cool. It's got perfect amount of power. If I um, owned that car and I only lived in Europe, I would have never sold it. So. Obviously, I'm sending it. Obviously, dude, you should have never turned in. Dirty Dave is in the house. Sending it. No. Oh, come on. Can't get the rotation done right. Because the weight transfers feels realistic. <laughs> they even got the... The dual shock works pretty well. I would love it if they used the dual sense PS5 remotes. There we go. Oh, that was nice. That was not nice. No! Speaking of Ridge Racer, how cool was that game back in the day? Katsunori Yamauchi used to say that it was better than Gran Turismo, but that's because Yamuchi is obsessed with graphics and Ridge Racer sacrificed physics for graphics 
and he loved that. I thought that was so cool. Such a typical Japanese thing. Jiro dreams of sushi, I'm telling you. Gotta watch that documentary to understand why Gran Turismo takes long to develop. AI is damn quick. I think it's set to hard or super hard or something. You earned a like, thanks, Kev. Next stream, you should drive R8 and 48 at Spa and see where what you can go fast in. Faster. Oh, the R8 um, GT3. Yeah, we can do that. I haven't driven the R8 that much in ACC. Nah, GH, Gran Turismo is a fantastic game. I absolutely love Gran Turismo. I just didn't feel like playing it tonight. I'm still one of its number one supporters. Absolutely. freaking lutely It gets the fundamentals right. That's the key thing. Maybe not in detail, but it understeers when it should, has oversteer when it should. It has, in my opinion, the contact physics are far beyond anything done by ACC and iRacing. In iRacing and ACC, if you just so much as look at the other car, it's spinning. Obviously, it's not like that in real life. We touch all the time. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I bought a, a PS5, and I bought it just to get GT7. Obviously, that hasn't arrived. So, I've been playing Ghosts of Tsushima. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we're ending our stream early, sadly, because the ACC servers went down. I hope that next Tuesday, when I'm back on, I know I did it on a Thursday this week. I just didn't have time on Tuesday. Um, yeah, R Factor 2 has a good contact model. I think maybe that one's the best one. Um, anyway, next Tuesday, we'll be back online. We're going to look at a stint from Mugello in Italian GT. And yeah, I have some other onboard stuff. Remember, I said I'm going to sneak in a lap. Um, I'm going to sneak in a lap of uh, Lamar at some point. So, yeah. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. And until the next one, next Tuesday, catch you around the next lap.